ever wholesale agreement has finally come through. You would have seen it at the start of the video. The trucks rolled in today and the delivery was made. So I've got four very big boxes here of clothing items. So I've bought a wholesale purchase of clothing items to let you in on it. I'll give you the numbers really quickly right off the bat here. It's been 145 US print jumpers that I've purchased. I've spent $11.50 a piece. $1,652 is the spend. Now guys, if you are new to the channel, I'm putting out three new videos every single week around how to make money on eBay and on Facebook Marketplace. And, and something that I spoke about in a goals video of mine at the beginning of the year um, was around really wanting to do a wholesale agreement. Something I've been very nervous about because I've been a little bit hesitant around where to actually go to get it. Um, what to expect, all, all these questions. And uh, in the end, I've just bit the bullet. I've spent 1,650 bucks and you can see it right here with me. So I'm yet to open it. We're gonna do that in this video today. We're gonna open it together. I'm also gonna give you some pros and cons about what I think about wholesale and whether or not you should be doing it for your own reselling business based on what I'm seeing today. And uh, I also wanna give you um, just some advice, some basic advice since going through the process to organize this purchase, I've, I've kind of learned a thing or two along the way from it. And I really want to just sort of just pass that along to you today. So I'm going to dive into this box here. I won't go into every single box because this video would go on for way too long. Um, but I will be opening up one of them and showing you some of it. And then I'll do my advice and my pros and cons. So let's get into the video. This is so exciting. All right. So what I'm hoping for here is I'm basically, I've bought US print, so I'm thinking college, um, US sports, um, the four major sports, some NBA, some NHL, anything like that would be really cool. Uh, geez, there's a lot in here. Uh, a lot of different multicolor, have a look at this. A lot of different multicolored jumpers. I've just sort of thrown them in there. There's no order to them. I will say as well that these are used jumpers as well. They're not brand new, they are used. And I was under no understanding of what the size would be either. So small, medium, large, extra large, had no idea. I just said that I would buy 145 well, not even 145, it was done on weight. Um, so they said that it would be about 145 that you'll get. So fingers crossed that is the case here. First one up, we've got this Santa Barbara, California jumper. The Kansas Jayhawks, that's a good one. There it is there, the Kansas Jayhawks. Um, so that's a nice one too. That one is on, uh, that's on a Gildan tag and that is a size, I think it's a, a youth extra large. So we've got a UCLA jumper there, which is kind of cool. UCLA is obviously pretty popular, uh, very much well known. Uh, Stephen Barry's is the tag. Uh, I, don't, I think that's a size medium. Uh, we've got the Wichita State Shockers. Go Shocks. What have we got on the tag on this? That one's another jerseys as well. That's a size large, nothing on the back, just a front print. Uh, but to be honest, the condition's actually pretty good. There's not a lot wrong with the condition here, so that's okay. Next one up is, we've got the Indianapolis Colts. A big front print there. Again, nothing on the back of that one, but we've got the Indianapolis Colts in the NFL. It is on an NFL tag as well. And this one is a, it says an extra large. So that might be a, an adult's extra large from the looks of it there. Oh, this is cool. This is really cool. So we've got Oklahoma State uh, jumper here as well. I kind of like that. I like the big front print on that. Um, that's also a Russell Athletic. It's got the Russell Athletic tag, as you can see there. So we've got another Oklahoma as well. I don't know if you can see that. Get my holding up right. Oh, here we go. The Chicago Blackhawks. How cool is that? Chicago Blackhawks, NHL jumper. Um, no marks or stains. This is a Russell Athletic as well, which, yeah, size large actually, that one there. That's that's a beauty. It's probably the best so far, that one. Uh, Colorado, We've got a Colorado jumper. That's kind of cool as well. That one's a black, obviously. Oh, here we go, a Duke jumper. That's really cool too, just a really plain. Again, I haven't seen anything on the back so far. They are all front prints. We've got the Huskies baseball. That's pretty cool too. Oh, Huskies baseball right there. Hail Huskies again, so two Huskies jumpers. I don't know, I only know all the major sort of US colleges over there. The, the NFL and all the NBA and all of that, the MLB, I'm pretty up on that, but it's the colleges, it's more or less the well-known colleges that I pretty much know. Oh, here we go, this is one I know. This is out of the NCAA. Have a look at this one. Fresno State Bulldog Football. That is a really, really cool jumper. is actually unreal. It's even got something on the sleeve on it as well. It says Bulldogs on the sleeve too. So. Uh, all right, what else? 
All right, so we've got Texas A&M. Texas A&M, big college over there in the United States. So that's a cool. Uh, we've got St. Louis University. So this is actually a champion jumper. It's got the champion uh, tag there too. And Auburn. Got an Auburn jumper. Okay. Big front print New York. It's just plain. I don't think that's any team or anything. Um, I don't think, no, I don't think it is. Uh, so this is another university. We've got the UMKC Kangaroos. I think that's a basketball team. Uh, over there in the NCAA competition. Jeez, there's a few in here. What do we got? Oh, we got a we got a Cardinals jumper. I don't know if you can see that. All right, there it is. There, Cardinals jumper. It does say Tulsa. It does say Tulsa, not St. Louis Cardinals. Um, so Tulsa Cardinals on that one. So I don't think that's the actual proper proper team. This one isn't. Uh, this one isn't American by any means. The Hofbra House, bit of Germany flavour. <laughs> Got a fruit of the loom size medium for the Hofbra House, Munich, München, Munich, Germany. Oh, this is wicked. It says to support the dead. Have a look at the print on that. Support the dead, and then on the back, what does that say? It says dead end garage. Tulsa. Dead End Garage Tulsa. Let me know if you guys know about that for anyone watching in the States. Guys, that's the box. That's everything. Uh, we've got obviously three more boxes to open up, but I might just end it there um, with the uh, with the unboxing side of things because we've been going now for about eight minutes and I'll obviously be cutting out a little bit of that, that unboxing uh, in the actual edit. But there's a stack of jumpers here and uh, I've probably done maybe about, I don't know, maybe about 30 of them and I've still got, again, a good 100 to go. So that's obviously going to be the quality and the quantity of what it is. There was a lot of Russell Athletic in there, a lot of Champion um, I've seen tags of, through the Loom, Gildan. Um, so again, look, not too bad from a sense of quality. They didn't look upon a really quick look first up um, to be too dirty, which I was a little bit concerned about, whether they've got any rips or tears or any dirt or anything like that. So they actually look like they're in pretty good condition. Let's dive into my, my thoughts around, I guess, the pros and the cons of wholesaling. Some pros around wholesale is that it is incredibly time efficient. It is so time efficient. I go out thrifting three to four times a week and, and that takes me generally about two to three hours a day. I've got to then log it all into the system on a daily basis as well in my inventory tracker. That all takes time. So when I can just simply purchase 145 jumpers and know what I'm going to expect more or less in the sense of a US print jumper, um, that's a massive plus for me with my business and, and, and being time efficient. So that would be a huge pro to wholesale. Uh, inventory volume as well. You can get 145 jumpers on your doorstep in the space of a 48 hour time period. This literally from the order taking place to, to actually landing on my doorstep took 48 hours. It was super quick. Um, so yeah, inventory volume to actually get stock quick. It's a, it's a great way to go about it. Um, it's obviously a targeted purchase as well. So you know what you're actually buying. If, if it's a certain product, it doesn't necessarily have to be clothing. But for me, in this case, I knew that I was getting US print jumpers, hoodies, and that's what I was expecting and that's what I've got. So a, a targeted purchase, knowing what item you wanna get in volume to be able to go and sell, it just kind of eradicates that, um, you know, that, that franticness when you're in the op shop, buying all these different items in all these different categories. Targeted purchasing is a big plus when it comes to wholesale. And also, it's usually profitable. I'd like to think that I can make a little bit more than $1,600. Based on what you've seen here, let me know what your thoughts are about what you think I can go and sell it for in the comments. I'd love to know. I've literally only just opened one of these four boxes, so there's still a lot more to dissect. I thought I'd just put it all into this one video here for you today. I might do a follow-up on this wholesale as it goes on to sell. but. And then if we have a look at the cons as well now, guys, I would say you've probably got a little bit less control. Uh, and what I say, or what I mean by that, a little bit less control than what the item actually is. Because I, I didn't get to see any of these. I, I didn't see a particular tear in a jumper that in a thrift store I would say no to. I've incurred the $11.50 cost, no matter how dirty, no matter how stained and damaged that item is. Um, so you've got a little bit less control. You kind of just have to say yes to whatever the order is and hope for the very best. And I think based on what I've seen here today out of this lot here so far, that's not too bad. I think I'll be definitely making a profit on each one of those. Um, but it'd be interesting to go through the rest of the boxes. 
a higher per unit price than what you would find in an op shop is what I'm referring to here. So basically a higher per unit. So I've paid $11.50 for these jumpers and ultimately I personally on the Gold Coast am really quite fortunate that I do think a lot of these jumpers I would probably be able to get under $11.50. I think I'd be able to get them anywhere between $5 to $10 a piece. Um, so it'd be very interesting to see how that goes from an $11.50 spend because obviously that eats into the profit a little bit. Um, so at times, not in all situations, but you can often expect a slightly higher price per unit. Uh, a large upfront cost. I did touch on that previously already in this video, but a $1,650 spend is a big upfront cost. And if you've never done that before, just doing thrifting, that will be a big whack to the wallet. So you've really got to be sort of prepared for that financially. Uh, and there will be also some smaller profit margins. Again, I've already touched on that as well, but about a 20 to 30% profit margin is a bit of a con. You do a lot of work to only make a 20 to 30%. And um, you know, for most businesses, that's great. Some businesses only gain a 1% profit margin. Um, but when you're doing a lot of op shop selling and that's maybe what you're used to, um, to go from 60, 70% profit margin op shopping to 20 to 30% for wholesale, um, that might affect you guys a little bit. So it's just to be aware of that, that you won't get the high end profit margins that you normally would when you're out op shopping. So I do, I do still think that 20 to 30% um, for the ease of having it delivered is still a great return if I can go out and get it done. So um, I would put that down as a, a con only for the comparison of op shopping. Um, my advice, my advice around wholesale would be to do your research. I've written that down first and foremost. Avoid jumping in right away, guys. There are a lot of different I guess wholesale suppliers that I was in touch with, that I had dealings with, um, that I was trying to ask enough questions for to know what I was getting my hands on. Um, and I think that's a really big key. I think you gotta know what you're receiving. And um, I think you can get sort of shot in the foot a little bit if you're not asking enough questions. So um, that would be one big piece of advice that I'd have. The other one would be that expect a mix of good, bad and ugly. When I have a bit of a deeper dive into it and I open up a few of these more boxes, um, look, they'll be they'll be good in the sense of sizes. Um, you know, you'll get some really large, extra large 2XL. Then you'll probably get a lot of youth sizes that probably don't go on to sell for as much. Um, no doubt there'll be some, no doubt in probably some of these that I haven't quite looked at properly yet, there'll be some damage in the sense of a couple of tears or marks. There might be some dirt stains, things like that that I'm gonna have to clean. And I think when you're doing wholesale, especially with used clothing wholesale, you've got to expect that. So expect the good, the bad, and the ugly. Um, I, I would definitely say to ask plenty of questions, which I did touch on about doing your research. So I've written that down there. Over communicate, ask as many questions as you possibly can. Ask for photos of the um, types of clothing or types of items uh, that you're gonna get. Even get a sample sent to you if you possibly can, just to make sure that you're comfortable with it. When it comes to clothing, there's not so much of a, you know, a mixed bag of clothing to receive a sample for. You can kind of be shown photos of that. Um, and I definitely was shown photos of what I was receiving before I purchased it. Um, so a really big key there is to obviously over communicate, ask plenty of questions. Um, to have a look at the overall success of the purchase as well when you're doing this. So what I'm trying to say here is that don't think that just because you've got some bad items, that doesn't mean that it's a, it's not a successful purchase overall. You've got to look at the overall you know, sell through of everything uh, and then really kind of determine whether or not it was a good purchase based on that, um, rather than looking at the individual sale of every single particular item. Um, so yeah, look at it holistically. Um, also too here, consider additional costs such as postage charges. Now, I say that because I was in the position of going ahead with this order and then I had a postage charge thrown on top that I wasn't aware of. I thought that the cost that had originally been given to me was the cost of the order. Um, and then I think there was about 80 odd dollars or so that was thrown on top of that um, that I wasn't aware of. And you've really got to, when you're doing your per unit pricing, you've got to cater for the postage. It's how much money did you spend before you actually got the items in your hands. Um, so for me, once I'd added that postage in, it worked out to $11.50. Um, I would say to stay local as well. Uh, one way to avoid postage charges is to stay local and just buy from somebody within the country. Um, so wherever you are in the world, stick to that country to source your wholesale products. Um, I definitely think that's a huge, uh, a huge tip. Um, it's obviously gonna lower the cost. You're gonna be in a better position if there's any issues. Um, to be on, on the same time zone even, to be, to be speaking to those people that you need to be speaking to if there's any concerns. Um, and hopefully it's a regularity and you can keep buying them, use them as a supplier that you can have moving forward. And, and obviously being local will just make that process easier with regards to delivery times and things like that. And then the last one that I've got here for my pieces of wisdom, even though this is my first wholesale deal, I've got, still got a bit of advice here, don't I? Um, don't rely solely on wholesale is one thing that I would say. I am not by any means after purchasing this lot here going to just simply start doing wholesale only. It's just going to be a small part of what I do. I'll be off shopping as much as anyone. I'll be sourcing off Facebook Marketplace. But really, this will just be a little, a little side dish 
a little bit extra, a little bit of cream on top, hopefully, uh, once they all do go on to sell. So make it a part of your business is my advice on this wholesale stuff. It's not to go in 100%. Um, I think that will help you guys out uh, with my little pieces of advice there. So there you have it, guys. We're all done. Uh, I think I'll round it out there. These are all my jumpers. And guys, on my new website, thehouseofnumber.com.au, I'm going to be trying to, I haven't, look, I'm going to be posting this video straight away and forgive me if they aren't all up there at this time of recording, but I will be slowly over the process of the next few weeks, drip feeding these jumpers onto that website. So always jump on, check it out. Um, I'll be putting up as much as I possibly can. I'll be doing a bit more of a sift through after this video as well around the other three boxes that I've got here. Uh, I'll be digging through the rest of these jumpers just to check for quality. But um, I'm really excited because like I said, this is something that I spoke about right at the beginning. Um, I wanted to get into wholesale. I'm finally here. I'm doing this very first video around wholesale, uh, tuning for you guys tuning in. And um, it's been a cool experience to just open up the first set. Um, and I'm pretty happy with what I've seen so far. So that'll round it out there, guys. Appreciate you tuning in this one. We'll see you in the next.